Hey everybody, my name is Aaron Blaze, and as many of you know, I love to draw and paint animals. So recently, I decided to create an entire video series on nothing but drawing animals that will be available on my website, creatureartteacher.com. Now in the next couple of weeks, the first set of videos will be made available, and it's going to be on drawing big cats. Within those videos, you're going to find uh, tutorials on drawing lions, tigers, leopards, cheetahs, and cougars. I'm going to take you through the anatomy, uh, gestural drawing, uh, locomotion, everything that you're going to need to know to draw big cats. Now, like I said, it's going to take a couple more weeks but I, before I get them done, but I've got a few of them done now, and I thought, you know what? It might be kind of fun to release the first video to you guys today. So I hope you enjoy it, and I'll see you later. Thanks. Bye. So let's go ahead and jump right into drawing the face, the head of the lion. Um, what I've gone ahead and done ahead of time is I've created these three images of the skull, a lion's skull. Um, I've got a profile front and three quarter view. And right off the bat, you can see how robust a lion's bone structure is. I mean, compare that, you know, think of the extreme all the way down to a house cat, your little kitty sitting at home. Um, it, it's interesting because all the same parts are there. It's just that the proportions are really pushed and shifted. And lions, because of their, their predatory nature, and they've got, to, they've got to take down such large prey, have such a really big, heavy bone structure, their cheekbones. Look at the size of their teeth. Um, uh, and the, the crest on their head, where all that jaw muscle attaches to so that they can bite down extremely hard, um, is incredibly uh, accentuated. And those cheekbones that hold everything in. It's a very strong, robust uh, uh, bone structure. So um, why don't we go ahead, what I thought I would do is I, I'm just going to go ahead and do some drawing right over the top of the skulls. Um, let's go ahead and start with the profile. And I'm just going to talk, start talking about, um, you know, how the flesh sits right on top of that skull. So you can think about that bone structure as you're working. Okay. So first things first, let's, um, Let's go ahead and I'm just going to kind of work the outline so you guys can see. First thing to look at is look at that break in the forehead. See how there's a, you know, you got that break like that. Lions have, you know, and think about lions too, just like people. There, there's going to be varying degrees of differences. I mean, you know, not every lion looks the same, just like every person does not look the same. But there are bits to each lion that are going to be consistent from lion to lion. So this there's always going to be this break some are straighter some are more have much more of a break but you always got this break right here so let's get in here and i'm just going to i'm going to knock that opacity up there we go and the first thing is you know you've got this that comes down but we got to get that nose in there and this is where the cartilage attaches and you'll always see kind of a break right in here and you want to make sure that there's enough space right here for those lips and the, ch and the cheek flaps and all that to go over the teeth. So, and the other thing too about lines, especially in profile, that nose, when it transitions into the nose like so, tends to be fairly round. So right now I'm just doing kind of the silhouette so you can see what I'm thinking here. And then you got this chin that comes down like so. And most of this is going to be hair. All right. Now let's go ahead, as I've gotten this in here, I'm going to go ahead and just anchor the eye. So we, obviously you see the eye socket and that eye has got to sit right in there. So if I were to draw the eyeball sitting in there, it would be something like that. Okay. But we're only going to see this much of it. And you've got, you know, lions have this heavy kind of brow that helps shade their eyes in that bright African sunlight. I've got big muscle here. Once again, just like in other cats, 
got this dark part that comes down right there. So I'm going to jump down to the nose. The noses on lions are, are along with other big cats, are very cool. And it's it comes down like this. You know, if, the, if, if I draw it from the front, which I will on the other skulls, you've got kind of this. It looks almost like a bird flying towards you, right? And then you've got the nostrils come in like this. But the actual nostril stays, this, this is all open. This is all open underneath. You got kind of this almost like a flap that comes down over the nose right here. Okay. And so that's what's going to be happening here as we draw. As I draw that nose in there. This is all dark. That's all nostril, like so. Okay. Let's go ahead and get that mouth. Now, one thing about cats, you know, you've got the the muzzle that comes down like that, and the, the muzzle is very distinctive. Well, the reason that muzzle is there is you've got this giant canine tooth that goes up into the bone and it kind of swells, pushes the skin, kind of out. So let's uh. And you've got also this very pronounced cheekbone right here. So in profile, you get this feeling of, you know, it's it comes underneath like that. And this all comes under, under here. So if I draw, let's come, let's come down to the lips. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you what I'm talking about. So first of all, this, all this kind of, this swells out from all the teeth and everything under there. And then underneath, lions have very heavy, dark lips lower lips like so okay and there's a little bit of flesh that comes off of there and then it this is all fairly hollow so it just kind of feeds up and up in here like so so this is you know kind of it's curving underneath kind of going going away from us under the line this this point right here where the cheekbone is is closest to us okay this and here this is all muscle got all muscle and then you're gonna have fur there too this tends to be a very shaggy part of the cat okay there we go get that eye in there and then let's go ahead and get the ear in now the ear tends to sit you know you've got this big crest area well, the ear and the ear canal and all that goes into here. So we want to get that ear right about here. And you've got a bit of fur, that comes, the, the skin flaps that right there. And it comes down just below the eye. There tends to be a bit of a tuft of fur in here. There's This part is going into the ear. And then you've got a lot of fur coming up over here on the top part of the ear and fur along there like so. Okay. And I'm just going to go ahead and bring that down. Like so. And then we've got a little bit of the spinal col column there that I'm showing. And that's going to have a lot of muscle attached to it. Now here, right along here, right above where this part goes up, you know, underneath, right, so, like so, this tends to have a little bit longer hair coming off of it, and you'll get some tufts of hair coming off, like so, and it all kind of grows in this direction and then this you've got the neck muscles coming in like so and then the neck coming off like that all right I'm gonna, I'm gonna put this little line here and I'm gonna explain that right now so I'm gonna go ahead and let's go ahead and turn off that skull so you can see we started out with the skull there we built up that lion on top. Let's go ahead and turn off that skull so it's not so distracting. And I can talk about 
some of this now. I'm going to move this eye back just a little bit and get some of those darks. You know, those lion's eyes, they, they, you know, they've got that dark, almost looks like mascara around them. Very, very dark pronounced eyes. Okay. And then lions and a lot of cats, even your house cat, all the big cats, they have all have very similar eye markings, which are, you know, you've got an area right here that's very light, right, right under the eye. And I'm actually going to just clean that up just a little bit. Just under the eye, that's very light. And then you've got kind of a dark line here. Now you've got, with this muscle mass, you've got the big teardrop. And you'll see it more in the uh, frontal view when we get to that. But there's this dark kind of teardrop marking on the, uh, on the fur. And then we got an, this area right in here tends to be light. And then some darkness there. Now, I'm going to just go ahead and around the nose, it tends to be a little lighter. And then you've got the spots that everyone seems to be familiar with of, uh, for the whiskers. And I'm just going to indicate those with lines right now just to show where they fall. But they ultimately are these spots where the whiskers grow out of. Okay? So you can see how we're, we're kind of building this up and how that bone structure is really dictated where everything comes down. Let me turn that on back on again because you can see right along here we've got this ridge right there that there's a break and I want to indicate that in the drawing so I'm going to come in and just come in there a little bit and right along here there tends to be a little bit more of a break now if I turn that off you can see that looks a little better now let's uh, I'm just going to very roughly underneath I'm going to indicate some color so let's uh, let's pick, you know, they're, they tend to be this tawny ochre, light ochre color, yellow. Um, and I'm just going to quickly scribble it in really fast, just so you can get a, a basic understanding of kind of their color pattern. So this is going to be the base. This is that the, their base color. They all tend to be kind of, you know, this tawny. Some are lighter. Some are more gray. Some are a little redder. Um, but it's all kind of in this range. And then as you get to the under parts of the cat, it gets lighter. Right along in here. Right along in there. Underneath gets a little lighter. I'm going to go back to this color again. Just indicate right along here because it'll it'll lighten up right, right along there. It'll lighten up as we get closer to the nose. So let's get lighter in here. And there you can see it gets a little lighter. And that nose is going to get a little lighter. And as everyone knows, the lions have these beautiful white chins underneath there. Now, this is light in color. This is light in color. All right. And this is not going to be white, but it tends to be a little lighter. I'm going to throw in just a little bit more of that tawny color. And their eyes are very beautiful, kind of ochre, golden color, like so. There we go. Very quickly indicate that. Let's get more of that fur in here. And remember, underneath there, it gets, you know, under the, under the neck, it gets nice and nice and light like so so when we get to the nose it can get a little darker and you know often you know the markings are going to vary from cat to cat just like I was talking about earlier every cat is different but you there there are some similarities this tends to be a little darker along the nose you can get a little darkness in here sometimes it gets a little grayer in this area along in here like so 
you might get a little gray area right here. What I tend to do when I'm drawing big cats is I'll, I'll play with warmth, cool, all of that. And it tends to get pretty warm in the fur and the ears up in here. And then very dark on the back. And I'll show you the patterns on the back of the ear here in a little bit. All right, so now if we wanted to throw a little shadow on there, if we wanted to throw a little shadow and get this thing to really sing, I'd be thinking about, okay, that, let me turn that on. Oh, I can't because there we go. Let me turn this on. You've got this cheekbone, this very strong cheekbone, and everything underneath that's going to go into shadow, right? So let's go ahead and just going to start throwing that right into shadow underneath, like so. Knock that size down a little bit. This will all go into shadow. Might get some shadow in there, like so. There. And so there you can see how we've built up this this lion right over the right over the skull. Let's go ahead and get that dark. You want to get you know that goes back in. Like so. And I'll focus on the ears and we'll do eyes and all that. But here I just wanted to give you a general sense of how that how how the flesh works right over that skull. Okay? How that how that works in profile. And remember, remember, we've got that break in the nose where the opening to the to the nasal cavity is, and then you've got that roundness. That's one thing that people people tend to miss with the with the big cats is um, what, a lot of times what they'll do is they'll you know they'll draw the profile coming down and then do this hard cut right there, and it, it tends to be much more rounded like so. You can see what I'm doing there. Um, some are, like I said earlier, they're different. Some might be a little sharper than others, but in general, it tends to be pretty rounded right there. So that's the uh, profile of a, of a lion. Let's go ahead and get into, uh, let me go ahead and shift these, drop those right in there. There we go. I'm going to turn that off and let's turn on the next one. Let's do one from, uh, from the front. So I'm going to go ahead and move that over. Whoops. There we go. I'm going to move this over right here. And once again, let's go ahead and dim that. All right. So the first thing is, you know, you've got all this muscle out here. <coughs> Excuse me. You've got all this muscle that has to connect. And so first thing I do when I'm drawing the, the uh, a big cat or, or lion is, you know, I'm drawing. They're very, they tend to have this roundness to them like so. So I'm just going to go ahead and draw that in. The other thing too, you've got this break. Well, let's go ahead and actually, we'll, let's just draw some circles right now for the eyes. We've got those eye sockets, all right? So we know those eyes are going to be sitting right there, and we'll get to those in a little bit. We've got this center line coming out, and then on a lion, you can, you can see that center line. It, uh, it's represented by actually darker fur. And this is going to come down. We're going to get right into the nose, right about in here, because we want to make sure these teeth are going to be covered up by the muzzle. So I'm going to go ahead and indicate this nose right about here. Because the head, and the way this skull is looking, it's slightly, slightly down. It's looking slightly down. Remember I showed you earlier the shape of that nose. Got the nostrils. I come down like so and here we got the lip here remember that flying bird it looks like a flying bird and you can see that center line on the nose let's go ahead and darken this up so you can see where that nose is going to fit now if I turn this off Look at, look at the shape of this, of the way the teeth feed into the skull and the swelling of that muzzle in the skull. That's going to be very prominent in creating the cat's face. That muzzle is going to come out. 
going to come way out here. Just like so. See that? And then let's go ahead and start putting these eyes in. Now they've got a really great shape to them. You know, a lion's eye has got the, the iris in it, but it's a pupil and it's very, very pleasing in the way that it's shaped. It's got this beautiful <laughs> cat's eye shape. Okay. And so I, I'm always, it's kind of this kind of thing. Um, so once again, I'm thinking about the muscle up here above the, above the eye. There's muscle that comes in here. This shape of the eye comes down like so. There we go. And then you got the under part of the eye and the under part of the eye it comes down like that. And once again, very dark, almost Egyptian looking kind of makeup on the eye right there. The other cool thing that often happens with uh, lions and other big cats, when they get out in the bright sunlight, those, that brow is so heavy that it casts casts a shadow right over the eye like so, like so. That, that really gives it a good sense of depth to it. I'm going to go ahead and color in that, that nose. Knock that down a little bit. Okay, so we've got this dark. Uh, it's a little small. There we go. I like working with a little bit bigger brush so I don't get too noodly. All right, but let's go ahead and follow some of the, you know, the, these markings tend to go dark down the face a, a little ways. And we're going to follow that form, the form of that skull underneath. Okay. So you've got nice, strong cheekbones like so. And it's going to be very, very apparent here. That muscle feeds over the top. Muscle feeds over the top. So you've got this very strong muscle right here. Let's go ahead and get this, this in here, and then this chin. Once again, mostly fur. Comes down like so. Okay. Now this is going to get really robust in here. We've got some strong muscles. And all that muscle that attaches up there comes up like so and they tend to have like these little wrinkles right there in their head now remember I was talking earlier about getting that teardrop this is a very distinctive lion trait are these little teardrop shapes in their markings this tends to be you got a little bit of definition that happens right here and once again this is going to be a light area that's going to be a light area and we want to get that light area under the eye nice and defined let's clean that up a little bit nice and defined there there sometimes you'll get a little bit of fur coming off of here all right, like so. Let's go ahead and give her a nice intense stare, just like so. Let's get these get these out of the way. So you can see how we're building this up. And once again, there's going to be a little bit of a break here in the nose. You know that. It's really defined by that tooth underneath going up through the skull. And you got a little bit of a break in here, like so. And then this feeds right up underneath 
Remember we had it earlier that, that it curves underneath going under that cheekbone. I'll just darken that up like so. I'm going to pull this out a little bit, get a little darker out there. Indicate where those muzzle whisker markings are going to come in. And once again, it gets a little lighter right along the nose. So let's go ahead. Remember, we wanted to add those. There's the tufts of fur right here. As the, if you're looking straight on at a lion, the ears connect right about mid eye, right about like so. And they're very round at the top if they're pointed at you. They tend to be very round. Now, the older the lion is, the more fights and scuffles it's been in and all that, they'll have little pieces torn out. It's very common. I've seen, you know, every adult lion that I've seen when I was in Africa, every single one of them had big chunks taken out of them. Okay. And then we got some more meat that comes out here. Right off the there. All right, so we've got the ears coming down like so, and they come down and looking straight on like this. It's going to be about mid eye, depending on the angle. Now, if the if the head turns, depending on which way that head turns, like so, that eye line and the ear line are going to change. But the way we've got this set up, we've got this set up here. Uh, it's going to be about eye level. Okay. And then here, let's bring that the inside. We'll see the inside flap of that ear. And once again, remember I was talking about you got a lot of hair right here in front. And then the, you know, the, the darkest part that where it goes into the ear is behind that, that hair. And then you've got tufts of hair in the front of the ear, big tufts of hair right here. Okay, so if I turn this off, you can see we've got a nice lion happening. If I draw her neck in, the rest of her body coming down, there, like so. Okay, and just like I indicated earlier, you're going to have these lighter areas. I'm not going to color the whole thing like I did earlier, but it, you know, we'll have this is lighter. That tends to be a little lighter, a little lighter there. It'll tend to be a little lighter around the markings there. Definitely got lighter here. And the muzzle, nice white chin, like so. You can see we got going. I get a little lighter in here, like I was talking about earlier. Definitely lighter in the chest area, like so. Maybe a little lighter there, and then we'll go. A little darker with our little teardrop. We'll definitely get some darkness inside the ear there, inside the ear here. That nose can tend to be a little darker. Definitely some dark areas along the line, the center line there. And then you tend to get a little darkness right under the eye there, like so. So you got a lion happening right there. All right. And then add to add a little, a little finishing touch. Since we've got him right here, got her. Let's go ahead and just uh, shrink that down. We'll add a little highlight. Now, one thing that I tend to do, let me erase that, that looks a little funky. One thing I tend to do 
is you know this part this the dark area right here it's still wet and so it's going to catch little bits of reflect it's going to glint off the sunlight like so you know the base of the eye sometimes catches a little bit of light because it's right where the eyeball connects to the to the skin and then there's also we got this light area in here now if we were to do the the whiskers the whiskers are going to come right out from the muzzle You've actually, you get, you always get a few long hairs off the chin. But these whiskers tend to, there's a fair amount of them, first of all. And they come out of here, off the, out of the uh, forehead, brow, like so. Now, um, if I turn on this group again. And let's pull him, pull her, pull her back up on top. There we go. Um, these whiskers, I'm going to throw this on top. These whiskers tend to kind of work their way back as well. Okay, so they come out and then back. And then up here, ah, come on, there we go, like so, all right, so there we've got that, and I'm going to go ahead and shrink up this one, just so we can see everything together. So we've got this one sitting here, return, let's go ahead and grab this one, and we've got a nice view there of how that face works over the top of that skull. Once again, let me go ahead and throw these guys right into a folder that way I can turn it on and off you can see how that face is built over that skull okay see how those cheekbones become prominent so when next time you see a real lion whoops next time you see a real lion you see those cheekbones you know what's going on underneath okay all right let's go ahead and do the three-quarter Turn these off. Let's turn this one on. Go ahead and move her down. Oops. And there we go. Move her down right about here. And let's go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and knock this opacity down. All right. So we've got the opacity knocked down. Let's go ahead and start drawing over the top. Get a nice dark brush. All right. So once again, as I did in the in the uh, in the profile, I'm just going to start drawing kind of a uh, the silhouette, and we're going to see that thinking about kind of the the brow muscle. That comes up. I'm also going to, I'm just going to quickly indicate the eye right here. And we know that the other eye is going to be over there on the other side. But we're not going to see much of it if we see any of it at all because we've got this coming down. And then the other thing to, to realize is this nose has got to come way out here got to come way out so that we can get in front of these these teeth so you know especially with lions make sure you don't draw those muzzles too short that's a common mistake you want that muzzle to be long they've got a long face very strong long face once again we're drawing that nose like that flying bird but now it's kind of in a three-quarter 
and wrapping around view but still very now from here it would it would curve around like so but as you get in that three quarter you get a little bit of a sharper break right there all right I'm gonna pull this down got the muzzle that comes down like so now this eye remember I told you, you got the heavy brow these heavy brows that come off the cat there's that bit teardrop again a teardrop there and this feeds feeds down the face like so and these cheekbones really dictate the direction of that skin under the eye like so, so if I darken this up remember got the shadow I darken all that got a nice cat eye right there and lions tend to have eyelashes you can throw those in there like so now this all goes underneath you've got a nice strong you know following that bone structure strong thing happening there and then this is muzzle following that tooth underneath remember so I'm going ahead and darken that up let's get this chin put in here like so now one of the things about this is that it comes up in here like that remember this is mostly fur Get a little bit of fur in there now we know that this is going to be real strong muscle but this all connects back here into the neck so there's still there's a lot of fur and more muscle that connects back here so this is going to come back around under under here you've got real strong break right there but you still got fur and other parts back here that come underneath and feed into there like that like so okay so we got this comes around this is muscle here and you've got this center line that comes down remember there's that break again let's go ahead and get that ear in that ear is going to fall right about the front part of it's going to fall right about here and it's going to come up and remember it's very round and then we got that break in the in the fur there and then it comes down this is very very lion-esque you got all this fur here remember this tends to have a lot of fur there's like a big tuft of fur like right there and then the other ear and don't forget your perspective this is another thing I want to talk about um, I should have mentioned this earlier look at my perspective I'm following the eyes there making sure the nose is the same make sure everything is the same okay which means I want those ears to fall right in line so they're gonna come up now, granted they can move independently of each other but here the ear hair is going to be kind of sticking out all right and you've got this very prominent part of the cheek sticking out right there and then this part of the ear comes that back and around like so whoops like so and we have some dark part of the ear right there and then this this fur this gets a little darker in here like so shrink that up a little bit I'm gonna move 
going to move all of that over. There we go. So you can see that lion head really coming to life. There we go. And you're going to get the neck muscle coming in like so. And just like I was indicating earlier, there's tufts of fur. This is going to have some strong fur. Remember I was talking earlier about some tufts of fur being in here? You'll get a little bit in there. Like so. There's that line indicating where the light is going to be, that light fur. You've got that teardrop shape. I'm going to indicate a little bit of a break in here. Once again, you've got this light stripe around the nose up here that feeds into the kind of the darkness of the muzzle. You're going to get this round shape for the muzzle right here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the skull off underneath. So now we can see our lion has really come to life by creating that skull underneath. We've got, you know, if you look at the, oops, if you look at the skull, got that strong cheekbone right there, which means this comes in and comes around, comes in, comes around. You know, that's very prominent right here. This is a, a break in the plane right there. Let's go ahead and darken that. All right. So there, you can see how robust these features are. I was talking about earlier. Remember, they're very strong features, much heavier than your house cat. You know, I've seen some people try to look at a house cat and use that as a model as, as, as a lion, you know, just trying kind of the, you know, just blowing everything up and it just doesn't work. You've got to look at each individual feature and look at how they're, how they fit on the cat themselves. They're much different. Even though the parts are the same, the proportions are very different. Okay. So there's your three quarter. Okay. So the next thing I'd like to talk about, um, is doing the mane on the lion. We were, we're talking about lions. I've shown you, you know, the profile, the front, and the three quarter. Um, but you know, obviously, a big part of the head for the male lion, and the thing that makes a lion a lion that we all think about is that big, bushy mane. Now, I'm just going to do it very briefly on this profile because as we get into more of the full body drawing of the cat, I'm going to concentrate more on the mane there because the mane's not just on the head. It covers the neck. It covers the shoulders. It, it kind of, it's really integrated in kind of the gesture of the body. And I think it's important to, uh, to include it there, but you can't draw the, the lion's head, you know, without the mane. So I figured I'd uh, do a quick uh, tutorial here. So let's go ahead and start on this profile. First thing is uh, I'm going to create a new layer right here on top. And uh, let me grab this brush here. There we go. And we'll get a nice dark color. So first thing is this mane tends to start down in here. There we go. If you look at the cat, you know, from the front, you've got the nose here coming down with the muzzle. La da da. There, eyes, like so, okay? That, you know, you've got the center line coming down. That mane will come down to a peak like this. A lot of times on the full, on a fully mature male. Now, once again, I'm going to reiterate, just like I, I sound like a broken record, there's, you know, with the mane, there's going to be, there's from line to line, it's going to be different. Not all lions are built the same. There's as many mane designs, styles, whatever you want to call it, as we have hairstyles. You know, it all depends on age. Um, you know, a young lion is going to have a much smaller mane. The older lions tend to be big and full and dark if they've made it that far. It's going to depend on diet. Um, you know, if a, if a lion's not healthy, their mane is going to be scraggly. So there's a lot of different things that determine what the mane looks like. But I'm going to go ahead and show you a nice kind of full mane. Uh, so anyway, so we've got this. It comes down into a little peak like I showed you in this little sketch on the right. I'm going to go ahead and erase that and get that out of the way. 
and you know if it's not really windy with the with the wind blowing the <laughs> the fur back um, it, it, a lot of times it'll kind of fold over in the front like so and then kind of work its way back you get a nice big full almost like a little pompadour going back there all right now I'm gonna blow this up a little bit and in here remember I was talking about uh, on the earlier drawings you get a little bit of fur getting getting a little shaggier and here will you especially do with the mane it starts to get a little shaggy in here because what you get is you get a lot of fur up in this area I'm gonna knock the uh, opacity down right here so you can see the drawing a little better that I'm doing with the mane and this tends to be clumpy very fur furry uh, Hair. and it gets a little longer in here comes off of the ear you've got this it's almost like a lamb chop you know a kind of sideburn that comes off for these big males and notice also I'm not drawing individual hairs I'm drawing clumps of hair and it comes down and you'll get a lot coming off in here with a few breaks but you know mainly this big clump coming off so you get a nice big shape like so this hair kind of breaks up into clumps and comes back like that now underneath that hair is going to depending on the thickness how full that mane is it hangs off the bottom okay so here you've got this kind of big lamb chop sideburn thing going on right there the ear tends to get a little buried in all that fur. This hair can fold right back. There we go. I'm going to sneeze. <coughs> wow! Excuse me. That snuck up on me. There we go. Let's bring this up. And then... If I were to continue, if I were to continue kind of the neck into the shoulder blades coming down like so, like that, you got the neck coming off like that, we'd end up with a big tuft of fur that kind of tends to go off of the shoulder blades. And a lot of times you'll see fur kind of growing this way into the mane off the shoulder blades the that ochre colored fur and then it feeds back into the mane like so and that all grows all in this direction it all kind of radiates out like so hanging down so i'm drawing big just clumps of fur i'm basically drawing the negative spaces between the clumps that's what I'm trying to draw right now. You don't want to get into drawing individual hairs. That'll just drive you crazy. But this fur, this fur tends to be very coarse. If you've ever felt the, the mane of a lion, which many of you probably haven't, um, it's a very coarse fur. All right. So there we've got it kind of roughed in. He's got this full kind of pompadour coming back, fur coming up, and it's sticking up all through here. Remember, we've got this bit of fur coming off, doing this sideburn lamb chop thing going on. Okay. And then we've got the fur that hangs off the, the bottom of the neck. Now, one thing I want to show you real quick, and, and on big males too, you'll have fur coming off the elbows, but we'll get into that when we get into the rest of the body. I'm going to show some color real quick because I want to show you uh, kind of how how the color varies. Um, once again, keep in mind this is a big mature male that I'm I'm talking about. So his fur is dark. You know, the, as they get older, 
as they survive all their fights and they they reach maturity, these males will get darker, a more full mane. And that's how they attract the females. So all you older guys out there, there's still hope. If you can keep your mane, that is. So anyway, I don't know what the heck I'm saying. So let's get this in here. There. Draw that in nice and full. And we'll bring this in. Now, there's a color difference, and this is why I'm showing you the color here. I'm going to jump over to a nice, warm, lighter, ochre, orangish color. And that's these, these sideburns, the tufts of fur on the side of the lion's head tend to be this light orange golden color. Now I've seen other lions in the wild that have giant full manes like this and their whole mane is just this beautiful golden color. So it really does vary. But these dark maned lions, they tend to have this lighter color kind of going back you know, kind of light in the front and very dark in the rest of the uh, on the rest of the mane. But once again, you can really you can really vary that up. Let's go ahead and darken that back up so now it all kind of sits together. So there you've got the mane of a lion. You've gone from a female to a male. So um, so that's that's you know drawing lions' heads. Uh, one thing I want to remind you is, you know, get out and draw as often as you can. Obviously, we can't all go to to Africa to draw lions from life. So if you can get to the zoo, that's great. And not all of you can do that. So one of the things I recommend is not so much drawing from photographs, although photographs have their place. I use photographs all the time. My reference photographs um, I, I, that I've shot either from zoos or from Africa or wherever it is that I've gone in the world, I always use those as, you know, bits of reference to, to check my anatomy, make sure I'm drawing things accurately. But one of the great ways of learning the form of an animal, and if you don't have the access of the real animal, is to watch video. The reason I stress video over photographs is video, you're going to see that cat moving. A photograph only gives you a still image. It's a one dim or two dimensional still image. You know, at least with our eyes, we can see, by, you know, uh, we can see depth. And so when you're looking at uh, a cat even just standing there you're getting two views of it and you can see the form of that cat photograph doesn't give you that and a lot of times it's really hard to tell what the form is but in video because things are moving you get a better sense with the light falling on that changing light patterns and the form you get a much better sense of of the form and so one of the things that I do still often is I'll record nature shows um, I'll take some of my own video that I've shot wherever it might be and I'll watch that and I'll freeze frame it and I'll do sketches from that having seen the video coming before and after so I have a much better sense of that form of the cat so keep that in mind if you want to uh, continue drawing uh, lions and tigers and bears or whatever it might be um, video is a great resource because of that ability to see the the animal moving around in space but anyway uh, that's the lion's head. Why don't we move on to the next body part? Thanks.